Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Usually when we talk about subnetting, there's only one right answer. So for instance, if you are challenged to find the subnet number of an IP address, or the subnet mask, or the broadcast address, or even how many hosts are in a particular subnet, you can do it and realize there's one correct answer. Well, sometimes when you're subnetting to meet a design requirement, and this could be either at work or when you're preparing for an exam, you'll realize that there's not just one answer. Sometimes there are multiple good and valid answers. Well, that's what we're going to look at here. We're going to take a design requirement and we're going to subnet in order to meet the requirement. And we'll take a look at what happens when perhaps more than one answer comes up. This is okay as long as you realize it's okay, and as long as you're able to present all the different correct answers. So with that said, let's take a look at our design requirements. We are tasked with creating 65 subnets for a new design, and each subnet has to be able to hold 150 valid hosts. In other words, we have to be able to assign 150 IP addresses for each subnet. Finally, we're given this Class B network in order to meet this objective. So we can cut this up and subnet it however we choose as long as we meet those requirements. So let's do that and let's see what we come up with. Let's begin by looking at the Class B network we were assigned. So it's a slash 16, it has the default subnet mask, and we know that the first two octets are dedicated to the network portion, so we cannot change those. We also know that the last two host bits, or at least two host bits, have to be reserved for the hosts themselves, so we can't touch those either. That leaves us with 14 bits to play around with for subnetting. Okay, so we're kind of setting the stage here. What do we have to work with? Now that we've done that, let's start answering some questions. Now, we know we have to create at least 65 subnets. So let's determine how many subnet, subnet bits we need to steal from the host portion in order to do that. So we just start looking at powers of two. Well, if we start really low, 2 to the power of 2, that gives us 4 subnets. So if we steal 2 subnet bits, we're going to create 4 networks. Not good enough. Let's take a bigger jump and go 2 to the power of 6. That will give us 64 subnets. We're close, but we're one short, so it's not good enough. Let's increase it by 1. 2 to the power of 7, that gives us 100 and 28. So that's good. If we steal 7 bits from the host portion, we can create 128 subnets. So it's more than what we need, but the next available option, the next lowest option, 6, only gives us 64. So 7 bits for the subnet portion seems to be the right answer. Now, let's do the same thing but for the host section. We said that the requirement was 150 hosts per subnet. So we know that 2 to the power of 7 is 128, which is not enough. So let's increase that one, 2 to the power of 8, and that equals 256. So again, that is more hosts than we need per subnet, but if we go any lower, 2 to the power of 7, then we're short, we don't have enough. So 2 to the power of 8, or 8 host bits is what we're going to need. So let's take a look at that. We need 7 host we need 7 bits for the subnet section. So 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and then we need 8 bits for the host portion. So 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8. Great, we have enough. We can do this. But this is interesting. Look at this one right here. It's not accounted for. Well, this brings up the topic that we mentioned in the beginning of 
having more answers than we thought we would, <laughs> would originally come up with. So let's actually write these out and see what it looks like. Well, if we were to write out the new subnet mask like this, as in these are the two network portions that we started off with and that did not change, and then we reserved seven bits for the subnet portion and we reserved eight bits for the host portion, that leaves us with one here that we need to figure out what we're going to do with. And because we have one bit position that um, has not been accounted for, we can go in two different directions. So we can start off by defining the subnet mask like this, 255.255.254.0. In other words, going with seven subnet bits and nine host bits. Why nine? Well, because we have to put something here. This bit either has to be a subnet bit or a host bit. So our first option is to say, okay, well, let's make it a host bit, which means actually that not only do uh, we have um, 256 hosts, if we add another bit to it to make it nine for the host portion, we can actually create uh, 512 hosts while still creating uh, 128 subnets. So this option is a good option. It works fine. It meets the requirements. The other uh, route we could take here is to claim this bit position for the subnet side, not the host side. If we did that, our subnet mask would look like this. So we would create eight subnet bits and we would just keep eight host bits. Which means we create 256 subnets and again 256 hosts per subnet. So if we think about our original design requirements of 65 subnets, Yes, both of these subnet masks meet that requirement. 7 bits will give us 128, and 8 bits will give us 256. And then we said we need to have 150 hosts per subnet. Well, this subnet mask will give us 512, and this subnet mask will give us 256. So again, we meet both of the design requirements for the host portion as well. Okay, so you can see uh, sometimes you'll have one answer and sometimes you'll have more than one answer. In this scenario, we have two answers and both of them meet the requirements. Again, this is okay. As long as you're aware that the possibility exists for there to be multiple correct answers in meeting a design requirement, so as we saw, we found the minimum number of subnet bits and then the minimum number of host bits and we had one left over that wasn't accounted for. So if you find yourself in that situation or something similar where perhaps you have multiple bits that have not been accounted for, then you need to examine all of the different options by assigning those bits to either subnet or host portions. Okay. So that's it. That is how we can go ahead and examine all the possibilities when we are subnetting to meet a design requirement. Practice these and you'll become more and more comfortable. As always, thanks for watching.